Okay, we have an application where we can open an image file, we can adjust a bunch of sliders, and we can save the image file. Um, right here is where the slider values will be displayed. And uh, one thing we didn't do, we didn't label all of the ticky marks here. We could do that, maybe I'll just do that temporarily here, uh, paint labels. It's kind of gross because they're not nice numbers. Uh, later, if we get time, I'll show you how to make it a little bit prettier where the values are more customizable. And also, we haven't spent a lot of time making sure everything fits nicely here. That's something else we would uh, spend a little more time at. But let's go over to our uh, source file. I want to uh, talk to you about how to d actually do the filtering of the image, the pixel values, based on the slider um, the slider changes that the user has made. So we've got a new buffered image. I made it up here and we have an array, a two-dimensional array of pixels referenced by width and height um, and we're going to grab this value, modify it based on the sliders and stick it into the new buffered image. Okay, so we're going to do this with a, a double for loop again but before we do that we're going to need to grab some information outside of the loop to make it available inside the loop. That way um, you can use those values without having to get them over and over again. Get them once instead of getting them every time through the loop. So a few things we need, uh, I'm going to make some values called alpha, red, green, blue, and I'm also going to need width and height. Uh, will I need width and height? I don't exactly, but I'm going to use them. Uh, there's, there's another way you could do it. You could use the array itself uh, to reference width and height, but um, and let's start those all off at zero and then specifically we're going to make width equal to um, I want to use what's the pixels that's sorry I couldn't think of the pic couldn't think of the name of it pixels no let's not use that one let's use original bi dot get width and we don't mix mix up the order of anything and height is going to be original bi dot get height. Okay, so everything's spaced out there now. And we're going to start off, uh, we need one more thing. When we import an image, we don't know whether it has an alpha channel, whether there is a transparency to it. So we're going to make a boolean, which I will spell correctly, eventually. Ugh, there we are. Which is called has alpha. And this will be uh, an in, uh, a true or false and it'll say whether or not there's an alpha value for us to deal with. So what we do is we go to the original buffered image and we get an alpha raster which is like a uh, sort of like an array for the values that we have. If there is an alpha raster then we have an alpha channel. If there is that means if it's not null. If we have a non-null raster then this will, that says that this will be true and that gets stored as true in this boolean. If it is null, this will evaluate to false and we'll put false in the boolean. So this is whether we have an alpha channel or not. Okay, now we can get started with our double for loop. So again, I'll start with i. i is going to be less than width. And this is where I could have instead used uh, you know, the, the width of the array or something like that, but I find that harder to read, so I'm just going to do it this way. And then we have uh, j. j is less than the height. Okay, so far so good. I've got my two arrays. Now, wh we've already filled in the pixels array right up here in this area with all of the RGB values, which are actually alpha, red, green, blue values based on the original buffered image. So we don't need to go back to the original buffered image anymore. Uh, we've got everything we need inside of Pixel. Uh, <clears throat> so we're going to start off with this. We're going to set alpha equal to 255 because if alpha, if there is no alpha channel, then uh, we're going to want that to be full on as big as it can be. Uh, that is no transparency. That's what 255 will be. So now we start dealing with the separate channels. Let's deal with the alpha channel if there is one. If we have an alpha channel, if the variable was has alpha, then we want to modify alpha to get what we want. Alpha is going to be equal to, now this is slightly complicated, pixel, 
and then we put an ampersand, sorry, not pixel, pixels at ij. There we go. The value of the current pixel, pixels at ij, and we're gonna we're gonna uh, use ampersand to mask it with one, two, three, four, five, six. We've got two zeros for each channel. So each channel takes up um, a value between 0 and 255. That's what FF is in hexadecimal. And so this basically will just grab the alpha channel for us. And then we're going to shift it over by 24 bits. That's a bitwise shift. So you don't have to really understand this quite yet. If you want to, though, that would be awesome. Go ahead and learn about this. But basically, we're going to get rid of all of the values that are not the alpha channel by blanking them all out with these zeros and just keeping these values and then shifting everything over so the the um, alpha part will be just a number at the end. So if this is full on uh, opaque, that number at the end will be stored as 255. If it's something less, it'll be something between 0 and 255. Okay, let's do the same thing for the red channel. Now the red channel is always there. There is no ifs to have, so we just do this. Red is equal to pixel ampersand. Now we're going into hex again. Now, not pixel, I did it again. Pixels at ij. There we go. And this time we're going to do 0, 0 for the alpha channel. F for red. We want all of the red that there is. And then 0, 0, 0, 0 for blue, green. Uh, green, blue, rather. And then we're only going to shift by 16 because we don't want to, we only want to shift over these 16 bits right there. Okay, let's do green. I don't even need these, do I? Get rid of the comments. They're kind of silly. We'll just copy this whole thing twice, and we're going to just modify everything. Green and blue. Same thing except for the masking. What have I got there now? Blank, blank, good, okay. And then there we go. Shift by eight, and actually the blue one we don't have to shift at all. It's already in the last position. Whew. Okay, so we have shifted the alpha over by 24 bits to get it to the end. 16 for the red, eight for the green, and none for the blue. But all we've done with all these zeros is blank out all of the values that are not part of each channel. Okay, now, so we have these variables, alpha, red, green, blue. Each one of them is going to be um, the new value for that color for that pixel. So red is going to be the new red pixel value, the new red part of the pixel value for position ij. So we need to modify it based on the slider value. So red is going to be equal to the what it is now plus the slider value. So I'm going to say plus equals, so take red and then add to it and take the red slider and get its value which is an int. And I'm going to do that for each of them. Now before I continue, what if the red value was currently 200 and the user said add 100 to that? Well, that would be 300, which is too big. The maximum we can get is 255. So we have to watch for that. If red is greater than 255, make it 255. So cap it. Also, we have to check if red is less than 0, we have to make it 0. Oh, and there we go. I hit uh, Alt-Shift-F and it put in all my braces and everything for me. So we're going to do those same thing for each one of these. Green plus equals green slider dot get value. If green is greater than 255, green equals 255. If green is less than 0, green equals 0. Same with blue. I just modify these right now. Okay. All right, I've got all my sliders done, and now we have to shift all of our values back. And actually, I guess I didn't really need to do the alpha one, did I? Because I'm about to. Uh, well, I had to. I had to get it. I didn't have to do the shifting part. So, my alpha, I'm going to shift back 
by 24. Sorry, I guess we didn't actually have to do that. That wasn't super helpful. The red value, I'm going to shift back by 16. The green value, I'm going to shift back by 8. And the blue value is just what it is, so I guess I don't really need that either. Okay, so we've done our shifting. Now the result is going to be merging all of those things together again. So the new pixel value is going to be, let's, let's do this, new bi.set RGB. We're going to set it to be I, J, oh sorry I hate it when it does that, I, J, and then we want the new pixel value, so I'm going to do it like this. It's alpha, and this is a bitwise or it's going to just combine all these together. You can actually just kind of add these things too. I think that should be fine. Uh, yeah, that's going to combine all of those things together. Just go with me on this one. Um, if, if you want more details about this, just let me know and I'll explain it in more detail uh, for anybody that's interested. But basically we're just going to, uh, we, we've lined up all of the place values and then we're just going to or them all together by combining the bits out of each of them. The alpha is all zeros for this portion of its number, so it's not going to affect any of the other channels. Okay, so we've uh, modified our new buffered image by setting pixel ij to be those values there. Now I want to point out, we did not modify pixels at all. What we did is we used some separate little um, uh, variables, temporary variables kind of, to, to modify stuff. So we still have this original BEI, the original buffered image, and we have the um, version of it in our pixel array. So if we wanted to, we could do something else, something different with it, maybe make different versions of the filtering uh, for different purposes. Okay, well I think I've got everything that I needed to. Let's just check it out here. Okay, I can work on my sliders. Let's maybe up the blue, down the green, and up the red just a little bit. I'll open my file, input, save my file, output, let's press save, successfully saved. Okay, and I'm going to go open that file and see what it looks like. Okay, here's the original image and here is the modified image. It looks like red has uh, and blue have gone up and green has gone down. Is that what I wanted to do? Red and blue went up and green went down right to me. You know what, let's modify it again. Let's get rid of all of the green and we'll up quite the red quite a bit. Let's save it again. And let's see now. Oh, I may need to reload that. Hold tight. Oh, I can't see my uh, windows here. Again, here's the original. And now there's the modify one. Really dramatic there. There's no green left. Okay, so I hope that gives us uh, what you need. Oops. There we go, I can't get to anything now. I can't access my uh, uh, my controls on my video recorder. Okay, I hope that gives you what you need. So we've got a, a pretty cool thing happening now. We've got our sliders, our values. Uh, if you want, I'll show you details on how to um, up update these labels so they work really nicely. And we can clean up the UI just a little bit. But overall, it works pretty well. We've been able to open a file, save a file, and modify the pixels individually. So I hope that's good, and uh, thanks a lot. Let me know if you need something else. Thanks.